Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. On today's episode, we speak to a woman named Terry from California. Terry turned to online dating after her husband passed away. She met a man named James on Facebook and they've been in a relationship for over a year now. But Terry has suspicions that James might not be who he claims to be after sending over $20,000 to him. Let's see if we can get to the bottom of this. Real quick, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. Um, James contacted me on Facebook at the end of October of 2020. He was handsome. He had a very nice smile. Um, I thought, wow, well, okay, who's this? And I had asked him, so do you know me through my work? He's like, no. Do you know me? Do we have friends in common? No, don't have that either. I just was looking through Facebook and I saw your profile and I wanted to wave at you. I'm like, okay, that's, that's fair enough. That's nice. So we started talking. His wife had been dead for four years. He had a 14 year old son. He was on a rig. His son was in boarding school in Southern California, which is right near me. He did a lot of cut and pasting and he was very romantic and in love with me from probably the first week, which and asking if I loved him. And I told him I didn't know him. So, you know, it takes me a while to love. You know, I'd lost my husband 11 months prior to that. I wasn't looking for any relationship by any means, nor romance. When I think about um, talking to James after, you know, my husband had only been gone, it did kind of help me with my grieving process. It made me feel important again, loved again, things like that, you know, but I tend to live, I can live in a fantasy world at times. Sometimes that's a little bit of my escape. You know, we all wanted those rainbows and unicorns and such. And he was kind of that, but I told him, I said, I'm not, I'm going to have a hard time, you know, ever having another, another man. I did actually talk to him probably two or probably two and a half weeks though into our speaking and he had a very thick accent. I will say every time I talked to him on the phone, he melted me with his accent and his words, you know, being a mother of five, grandmother of nine, I, and I nurture a lot of people. I, I think that's just natural for me that I kind of took him under my wings as well. And he wanted to come home to me and he wanted to come home to his son who was in boarding school in Southern California. But the problem was he couldn't get a hold of his money and he needed to buy out of his contract. I guess his contract was until January. So if he was leaving it early, he needed money. I thought that was kind of strange, but I had the money. And of course, all of a sudden I'm feeling responsible for him. I think it was probably seven, seven hundred or eight hundred dollars. And he was grateful because he was going to be getting off. Uh, he was actually in the, I, I'm assuming the North Sea off of Ireland. So after I sent James the seven hundred dollars to get him back home, he ended up leaving the, the rig and supposedly he had all his, you know, his wallet. Cause I said, well, send me your driver's license. You know, I just wanted some IDs, things like that, you know? And of course we couldn't video chat because the static uh, on the rig would blow it up. Finally got all his documents. He got to this one airport. Oh, lo and behold, his passport, passport is expired. And that was my first like, what? How do you do that? And he actually sent a picture of it, which I sent to you guys. It's like, I, I don't know. I don't know, honey. I, I just, I was on the rig and I didn't realize it. So it expired in November. So then that started this, well, I'm going to need more money because I have to hire a lawyer. Finally got him on a flight and it got him. He had to have an FRO, which is some sort of a financial, some sort of an officer to accompany him. So we had to pay for that. Then he finally got all these documents. And he ended up, oh, going to Turkey. I said, what are you doing in Turkey? Because of where I'm coming from in my situation, I have to go through Turkey. I mean, I gave him a lot of money. He would be harsh. I would say, I can't do anymore. And he'd say, how can you give up on me now? How can you just leave me here? I, you are all I have in this world besides my son, but you are the only person that could help. And I'd argue with him and then, you know, hang up or whatever. And then he'd send me just these beautiful texts and just on and on. 
and it would be a like almost a roller coaster of I would just I would just be so angry and then he would turn it around he'd be so sweet and we're gonna do this together we're gonna do that together and I can't wait to have you and um just just total emotional roller coaster good bad in the middle um it was just so hard to explain why I kept going back for more then come to find out he calls me saying that the Turkish it was a Turkish lawyer was corrupt and all the officials were corrupt and all they did was steal his money I said you mean my money and <laughs> let's let's be real about this now all of a sudden he has to get more money to get a real lawyer that's not corrupt so send him more money finally got a real person now he's really gonna fly from Turkey to Los Angeles and all of a sudden he's in Los Angeles so I'm like great okay I told you you gotta give me an hour to come pick you up and he's like well no I bet him to be in detained next time I hear from him get a load of this he's in Portland Oregon I said what are you doing in Portland Oregon when we landed in Los Angeles we had to quarantine so they shipped us all up to Portland Oregon to quarantine and I said that is absurd his quarantine's 14 days then when that's done he tells me that they will turn around and fly him back down to Los Angeles so anyway he's still in the facility and you know he needs food now so of course there's steam cards uh, apple cards google play cards and then it finally went to apple cards because they were the most reliable but I've still had trouble with them as well a lot of things didn't work but those did and I actually went into Walmart one time and I went to the girl and I had cash and I said I need this to go to you know Istanbul and she's like she looked at me and she said you know what I can't do this I said what do you mean she goes I'm sorry I will not do this transaction I did a transaction with a lot within the last few weeks that was a scam and it went to Turkey and I won't do it so I'm like okay that's fine so I went to another Walmart and they did it I mean I guess I was grateful for her but I still, you know, when you're determined, you do it. So anyway, all of a sudden, his his son's phone broke. He has an iPhone. And he needs a new iPhone because this is how he's going to take his finals for his school year. Like, they take him on a phone? He's like, yeah. I go, don't they have computers? No, no. They all use their personal phones. Oh, geez. So anyway, I give, give Kevin the phone. And, and then I said... Now you have to send me pictures of your dad and you. I never got a picture of those two together. I got two pictures of Kevin or Kelvin, uh, but he looked younger. He looked about 12 and pictures of James, but never together. And I still talked to him. I haven't talked. I probably talked to him yesterday. I'm supposed to give him money on payday. Yeah, right. That's not going to happen. Trust me. But I also wanted to talk to you guys, you know, before I totally like blocked and pulled him off. I didn't know if I'd need more things off of um, the app that I have, you know, where I've looked through all my conversations, names and such. And so I, I kept it, but there's, there's just no way, no way. Well, I'm reaching out to Social Catfish. Um, I, I just felt it was, there was no other way for me to let go, for me to feel, I mean, I need support and I feel you guys have a lot of support. Quite honestly, I'm expecting him to be a, a scammer from Nigeria. If I find out he's a scammer and even maybe before I find out he's a scammer, I I have to block him. Um, you know, it's it's not, like I said, it's not even all the money. It's just the lies, the lack of trust, the... You know, it, it's just ridiculous. I, I can't put myself through this and I know it's going to be difficult. After we received this video message from Terry, our search specialist, Lenny, got straight to work. She used the tools on our site, socialcatfish.com, to verify if James was a hardworking oil rig worker or just another romance scammer hidden behind a handsome face. 
If you're looking to verify your online lover, the first step would be to use the tools on our site. You can click the link in our bio and check them out. Just hitting like, comment, and subscribe helps us build more tools out for you to use in the future. Now it's time to meet with Terry to let her know what we found. Hi, Terry. Can you see me? Oh, I can. I've seen you so much. You're comforting. Thank you. Oh, good. Well, I want to go through what we found out about James from Santa Monica. One of the things that I try to educate people about is that behavior is the thing that needs to be considered first and foremost. Uh -huh. One of the things that happens to anyone is that we get distracted by visual things. You had the photos of him, but you also had this passport. One thing about this passport is you see that it expired in 2020. If that's the case, how did he get overseas anyway? How did he travel over there? I kept saying, how could you possibly let this expire when you have a son abroad and you have this? Yeah, it was not one plus one just couldn't equal two with him most of the time. Right, Terry. No one, no one would ever allow their passport to expire while they were overseas. They, they would have it renewed before they left or whatever. So you're right. He's either incompetent in his business and his daily life affairs mm -hmm. or, or he, it, this is a scam. So I found this passport to be a, a fake. We know that he couldn't, didn't have his passport to get back. So he claims to have hired this agent to yeah. have him back. Yeah. Um, I looked into the diplomatic service authority in the UK. There is no such authority. <laughs> this form is one page. It's very vague. This is a common story with scammers because they know that for you to try to verify their birth records in another country, it's impossible. For yeah. you to verify their parents in another country, a lot of times they say they're born overseas and then they lived in California for one year or you know lived around the country. They're just setting out red herrings that may be so difficult that you just give up on trying to check on. Okay. So there's no way that it, it's just plain common knowledge. Nobody gets on a plane without a passport. And you can't just hire someone to accompany you in lieu of having the proper documentation. It just doesn't work that way. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nothing added up, I tell you. <laughs> But it's very hard when you're emotionally tied and they keep assuring you that they're coming home. They keep assuring you that everything's clear, but there's always something that comes up. You presented me with this check and it was very interesting to me <laughs> because this check checks out. There is an attorney's office by that name. The routing number matches the bank that's there. The signature, how do we don't know who that signature is, but for me, it was a little curious that this was check number 101 and it was for $13,000. So it's kind of a personal check, number 101, for that much money. So it's the first check out of the box, basically. <laughs> so one of the things I did is I, and this is the first time I saw so many things line up. Usually it's easy to spot. It's usually a routing number that doesn't match or the address doesn't match or you can't find the person. But in this case, it checked out. So I left a message for Mr. Rosen, the attorney that has this firm, and he called me back. This is not the first time that someone has called us in regard to being presented in a romance scam. Oh, wow. These are old checks. The account number was correct, but it did no longer exist. If you were to present this check, it would not be good. You know, I, I was seeing money laundry and I'm just like, you know, I've given him a lot of money. I've done a lot of things in my life. Boy, I didn't need that at my age with, I have five children. That's all they need to see what mom's doing, you know? And when they do money laundering, they need a legitimate person because that's that that's the easiest way to go and and that's what they try to do with your account so you it is a credit to you that you would not deposit that some of the things that these scammers do uh there's a couple of ways that you can become a mule in a romance scam one of them is 
let's say, Terry, that he contacted you and came clean and he said, yes, I'm a scammer and I don't have your money. It went somewhere else. But here's a way that I can offer you that if you will let me use your bank account, I will send you money. It doesn't belong to me, so you can't really have it, but you can take a percentage of it. And this is a way for me to pay you back. So that, that's one thing that they, that's one way that they do it. Um, another way is they actually advertise. I have seen sites on Facebook mm -hmm. where it's obviously a scam. They are saying, hey, anybody from Detroit that would, you know, contact me. We ran the photos that you provided of him. We yeah. found uh, new photos on different dating sites all over the web. So we know that he's appearing on these dating sites. He's using different names. They are different locations. So what we do know is that this man is a victim of his photos being stolen. He has nothing to do with this relationship. I understand, yeah. All right, you also sent a picture of a bunch of guys on an oil rig. This is just simply a stock photo that can be used in any way that anyone wants for free. I found it in articles about the industry. I found it on um, websites of oil companies. So it's just a stock photo that anyone can use any way they want. And you know what's funny? I kept looking at it, trying to find his face in all those. And I'm like, I can't find him anywhere in these, you know? Well, so and I was surprised his face wasn't in there because nine times out of 10, the scammer will Photoshop the photo and put his face on those types of photos. So I was a little surprised that he wasn't, he hadn't done that in this case. The final thing that I'm going to share with you is the tracker that you sent to this person. Um, we, we know these scams are connected to Africa, but they're also come out of many of the Asian countries as well. And in your case, the tracker came up Singapore. Singapore. Would have not guess that one. It was very interesting to me too. I haven't had anything different than Africa for a while. Yeah, I see that. And I was trying to, you know, he would always disappear at certain times and come back, you know, at nine or 10 at night our time or, and I'm up very early in the morning, California time. So he, well, matter of fact, I got an email from him since I blocked him on Hangouts this morning. And it was sent at 3 a.m. my time. So, wow. Okay. Yeah. Or, and one thing that he might do from here on out is he might try to contact you in different ways. If you block him on your email, he might create a new one. He might create a new phone number. You might be getting an increased number of people reaching out to your profile. These are, these sometimes happen after you've been scammed because they put you on a list. If you've given $1, the, the word is out. This person gave money. I bet you could take what you already know and figure out a way to get more from this person. So just watch out for that from here on out. Yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for being there for us. And if I can help in any way, I, I would like to retire in a year. So I could do some anything, just ask. Just I, I am making a note of that, Terry. I am. So it's been my pleasure talking to you today, and I'll see you more on the group. Okay, Lenny, thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Thanks for watching another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time. Scams come in so many different forms. If you have been a victim of any of the scams below, please email us at sharemystory@socialcatfish.com. We'll get to the bottom of it with help from our Social Catfish team. By sharing your story with our YouTube audience, we can educate, spread awareness, and maybe someday we can put an end to these scams.